Uh, my name is Abraham Flores. I'm 33 years old, and I first came to the center as a client. So I am Element Eclipse, and I uh, moved to San Francisco via Ohio. Um, I also lived in Portland, Oregon, and uh, Seattle, Washington before coming here in 2012. I was about, I believe I was about 18 years old. I started being sexually active and I had originally seen my uh, family physician um, when it came to um, STD, HIV testing. And some of the experiences that I had with my family physician weren't really gay friendly. Um, so I sought out the Los Angeles Gay and Listening Center for them to be my main providers uh, when it came to uh, HIV testing, STD testing, but just um, overall uh, physical and mental health in general. I remember a physician, my family physician, kind of meant, mentioned, mentioning, uh, uh, you know, a little side comment on the side saying that I sh shouldn't really be having anal sex to begin with. So that prompted me to never go to that physician ever again. There is already so much shame attached to sex as it is. And the comment from my family physician just made me, <laughs> um, made me angry, but it made me, it also scared me thinking, you know, well, are they gonna mention something to my parents? So I definitely needed a safe place to sort of be myself and be completely honest with the staff about, you know, my sexual orientation, what kind of, uh, sexual activities I was involved in. So for me, it was a no-brainer. Uh, I automatically enrolled in primary uh, care at the Gay and Lesbian Center for uh, HIV and STI testing. I can resound off of that and saying that um, for me personally, I also um, am HIV positive. So uh, it was very important for me to feel like I was telling something that mattered to another individual also. For me, I would say the the number one thing that I find is different about the AIDS Foundation compared to uh, a primary healthcare physician or some other specialized um, STI clinic that we have a few of here in San Francisco would be that um, there is a very diverse uh, group of people working there. I find myself every time um, that I go in being um, having a good time, having a good conversation, being comfortable with the people that I'm talking with or um, or seeing during the day, which I think um, is next level. I don't think a lot of businesses address the, the need for diversity and how having somebody that might be your same skin tone or um, have the same uh, background as you is important whenever it comes to to sexual health care. I mean, definitely for me, you know, I I felt, you know, coming from a very conservative background, I felt kind of alone and isolated when it came to my concerns, you know, because I wasn't, uh, before going for services to the center, I wasn't interacting with a lot of gay men and a lot of gay men, gay women, or trans people, you know, in our community. So I thought that my concerns were just my own and that I was living in my own little world filled with, you know, all these phobias and concerns. It was almost, <laughs> it was a relief. I just remember feeling relief because I could finally talk to people understood where I was coming from and they knew what I was talking about. It was a feeling of almost relief to know that I wasn't alone with my concerns when it came to my sexual health and my mental health and issues about, you know, uh, feeling judged by, uh, by, by uh, members of the community staff at my primary uh, uh, care facility. Uh, so it was almost <laughs> it was a relief i just remember feeling relief because i could finally talk to people who understood where i was coming from and they knew what i was talking about when i first became positive um i was just going through the medicare system and portland oregon did not have as many options so you were going to a doctor who was just giving you the the very baseline of what you needed to know um and you were taking pills 
And even though that clinic had the information, it wasn't really something that you had the support of the community around. Um, so when I moved to San Francisco and I got invested into the foundation, it was great because um, there was just people that you'd see on the street. And even though we have things like client confidentiality, it's it's great to see somebody that you know from the clinic out on the street and not feel so isolated or alienated. Um, and there was also just behaviors that I had that I knew nothing about. You can't talk about um, bottoming or topping or oral or all of these things that cause STIs with your with your parents. It's just not something that we're taught as kids. And um, for me personally, my health class involved how to not make babies. So um, to have a, a deeper conversation was very humbling. Uh, and also, um, I appreciated the support and I found a lot of that through um, just investing my time and, and getting my regular checkups like you had discussed. Uh, the, the three month was new to me. I thought it was once a year also. Um, and so, yeah, just listening to the advice of knowledgeable individuals and allowing myself to take better care of my body. Um, but it's always great to to feel healthy as well as actually be healthy. Yeah, and if I, I, I like to add more to that because um, some of the best um, experiences that I've had at the center have been with um, uh, some of my friends who I've encouraged to actually go to the center. They would, some of my friends wouldn't really classify themselves into the LGBTQI community, but you know, they're definitely allies and you know, speaking to them about PrEP, you know, how it's um it changed for me it changed my sexual lifestyle um it, for the better it, it reduced anxiety about you know about being intimate with someone and still being able to use protection and on prep you know the prep was able to kind of liberate me from the fear of what if the condom breaks or what if something happens you know and it's like a a, you know, like a security blanket almost. It guarantees you, um, it guarantees my safety. And me having that conversation with my friends and letting them know, even though they're not in a high risk um, demographic for HIV infection or STIs, that they can go to the center and get services too. It's not just for the gay and lesbian and, and trans communities, it's open to everyone. And it's, I've sort of, um, open their eyes to the center, you know, and their services. And, and that, that that's probably one of the best experiences that I've had being able to educate my friends about the center and the services that they offer. So I was just elated when I heard that you equals you, which is like this undetectable equals uninfectious um, thing that I saw on the wall during one of my sexual health screenings. Um, and when, when we had that conversation, it was nice to see one of my friends who was underinformed and taking prep, um, listen to me and then go in and have a conversation with them and um, switch over to the prep 211 because he, he felt comfortable around um, his sexuality and knew a bit more about how um, HIV is transmitted and what prep can do for you.